And so when the price dipped into the 60s and now more lately into the 70s, and then we saw utilities step in. But the spot price it reflects the spot market and the spot price is updated intraday. So that's what investors watch because it's something that they can, that's tangible, something they can see on a daily basis. The term price is updated at the end of each month. So uh, the term market is much more um, cloaked in secrecy. The contract terms are not made public um, almost ever. Um, there are services that you can pay for um, like we do to get more detail on that market. But the term market is anything beyond 12 months from now settlement. And that is where utilities procure most of their uranium needs. Um, most of the time, the utilities are looking out beyond, let's say, two years. And they're looking at three to 10 years out is really the period of time utilities are typically buying for in volume. Now, like I said, they'll, they'll engage in carry trades. They'll do some opportunistic buying in the spot market, but it isn't where they're going to meet most of their uh, volume needs in terms of actual uranium. Um, the two markets are inextricably linked via carry traders. So as the term price climbs, that will essentially pull the spot price up because there will be trades done between those. And that's exactly what has happened over the past six months. So if you go six months ago, you would argue uh -huh. that the floor was probably into the mid to high 70s because the term price is at 80 the three-year forward was at 82 or whatever it was. Now we have a three-year forward at 90 or 89. And a, and a term price is now 85. And now what do we see? The floor is being met in the mid-70s. And so the, the floor literally jumped up by $10 since April. And, and that's because of the traders that are connecting those two markets. So we're, we're in an uptrend in the price right now, even though if you see the spot price drop by a dollar on an, any random day, whatever. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the spot market... Um, will be essentially not glued to, but influenced by the long-term market. Sometimes you have severe risk on or risk off situations in the markets where you'll see the financialization of the sector. You'll see in severe risk off, you'll see hedge funds that are holding physical uranium, sell uranium into the market just to, just to reduce risk and free up some cash. And that'll push the price down. It's an illiquid market. Um, we'll only see four to 5 million pounds um, traded in the spot market on a monthly basis. Um, to give you an idea, utilities will consume almost 200 million pounds this year. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a small and illiquid market. Um, but at the same time, risk on markets and the financialization of the market on the long side can push the price up. And we see that with the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. You know, they've when they're raising cash, sometimes you'll see like intraday, you'll see, oh, their mm -hmm. ATM is on. Well, they probably raised this much money. Traders will go and buy pounds in the spot market, hoping to sell oh. to the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust two or three days later at a higher mm -hmm. price. So you'll actually see markets dictate kind of the price, the, the, the equities markets dictate the price in the spot market. Not all of the time, but when it's risk on, risk off. Um, but yeah, those two markets are, are connected. The term market is really where we put most of our focus and attention in because we feel that that really has most of the influence on, on the overall market. A spot market can go up and down on, on very low volumes. So most of the time, I wouldn't say it doesn't matter. It does absolutely matter. A, because that's what equities investors watch. And B, because now we're seeing producers actually want market reference contracts. And the contracts, regardless of the fact that utilities haven't signed a lot of, of volume there in the term mm -hmm. market of the past couple of years, we are seeing that the contracts that are being signed have a greater percentage that is referenced to the market. And what that means is at the time of delivery, it'll be... Uh, you know, usually like a three three month up to maybe six month average of the spot price uh -huh. is what the utility will pay to the producer at the time of delivery. So the spot price matters. It matters a lot. But as far as volume is concerned, most of the volume is procured in the term market. And the the action, the price action of the term market, I would argue matters um, matters a little bit more than the spot market. So for someone who believes in uranium and doesn't have access to the service that you pay for, the knowledge that you get, uh, it almost seems as though they're at a huge disadvantage. Uh, and it's the information that you get for term, it's it's almost critical. Uh, I, I don't know if that you see that continuing. Uh, would you first of all agree with that? or And then would, do you see that continuing or do you see that shifting a bit? Oh, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I would say that there's, unless you are, 
literally buying the ETFs and, and trading the charts in this sector. Like you can have, you can do a lot of reading on the sector that's outside of these paid services and, and get a, a generally decent read on the overall fundamental trade and then trade the charts. Mm -hmm. But if you actually mm -hmm. want to have conviction when the markets are, are volatile, you have to know what's happening in the physical market. And that's something that just looking at the spot price is not going to tell you. And so, I mean, mm -hmm. a perfect example is going back to March, April. Um, you know, the, the week that the spot price bottomed at 62, um, not only were you being surrounded by abysmal sentiment, but you were seeing the price continue to decline. And so maybe you were loosely bullish on the sector, but all of the evidence on the screen was that um, this is going to zero, right? That's what everybody <laughs> was thinking. Yeah. Um, but for us to be able to have access to information on what's happening in the physical market, um, we could actually see almost in real time that utilities were buying in the spot market when the price hit that level, that carry trades were starting to get done. And that was something that we were able to communicate to our membership and say, hey, yes, it mm -hmm. looks like the sky is falling, but we're seeing the fundamental buyer step in here. This is the floor. And that actually coincided with the, with the bottom for the equities as well. So mm -hmm. if you didn't have that information, you you can see, you can go back and look at the volumes late March, early April. I mean, that was pure capitulation. But of course, yeah. for every seller, there's a buyer. So, uh, you know, if you if you had a read on what was happening in the physical market, at the very least, you would know not to sell the bottom, if not have enough conviction to put some money to work then, which has paid off enormously well since then, obviously. Now, did we know that we would recover back to, let's say, the mean and then go on another 50% move? No, of course not. We didn't know that in yeah. March or April. The equities have had, had, had a torrid run, having a decent pullback to around the 50-day here, which is totally fine technically. But um, yes, you have to have that information if you want to invest in a fundamental way. If you want to trade the charts, just trade the charts. You don't need any of this information. Mm -hmm. But if you want to invest fundamentally, it's, it's absolutely imperative that you have that information, in my opinion. Justin, uh, curious about how to invest in the bull market. You know, if someone's bullish on uranium, uh, you know, where is the value right now? Is it in majors, developers, juniors, royalties? And then when you talk about, you know, constructing a portfolio, I mean, how do you maximize torque, manage risk? I mean, what's your kind of philosophy on on building that? Sure, that's a good question. Um, well, that, that answer really depends on where the market is at at any given time, right? So the equities, I would argue, have moved, and I don't have to argue this, it's clear in the charts. You can chart mm -hmm. you know, the uranium ETFs against the spot price. They've, they've moved up substantially against the price of uranium, um, even though uranium has moved up also, but they've outperformed the commodity significantly in the last six months. So mm -hmm. the equities are probably due for a bit of a pullback. They're having that here. Um, if we have a few more days or weeks like this, I would say the value is in, you know, even even the midterm developers and producers and some of the large caps. Um, those mm -hmm. have run the hardest. Really, if we're looking at a snapshot right this very moment on November 4th, I would say there's enormous value in some of the small caps, some of the small cap developing, developing companies, because the market just has not wanted these things at all <laughs> over the past run. So some of these just haven't moved or yeah. they've moved up half as much or a quarter as much as some of the big large cap um, producers and developers. And there are some quality names there with some decent projects. And we have not seen that super euphoric, enthusiastic type of bull market yet where, where everything moves. And also keep in mind, URNM is going to, the index that URNM tracks just changed their inclusion, uh, their inclusion requirements. So there's going to be a number of names that are going to be dropped from the index in mid-December. So there could be kind of a small cap sale at the later part of this year. I would say look out for that. Um, I would argue the screaming buy that if you want to just close your eyes with um, the lowest amount of risk and the best risk adjusted proposition is just the physical commodity is, is sput. Um, that's, that's really what it's all about here. I think um, the, the, cause the price hasn't really moved that much at all. The equities mm -hmm. have gone on a good run. The price hasn't moved. So for us, SPUT is an incredible, incredible um, value proposition here. Yes, if we go to $150 uranium, will the equities outperform SPUT? Probably. Mm -hmm. But the downside risk here for SPUT versus the equities, I would say, is minimal. Unless we have a, a serious liquidity event, we should see 
the bottom end spot, you know, a dollar or two or maybe three down from where we are today. That's pretty minimal. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, but can trade at a wider discount than NAV. We've seen it happen before. It's traded as wide as 17 or 18 percent discount. I think it's right now. It's just a few percentage points. So that could go wider. But what is that? Let's say a 15 percent downside to what no. we think could be 100 percent upside. It's liquid. You can buy <laughs> as much as you want. Um, yeah. So, so spot's a strong value proposition. Um, but if we have a healthy pullback, if we have a 200 day pullback in the sector, I would say buy, buy the absolute hell out of it because we're, we're going to see uh, a move up in price. That's going to happen. Justin, for investors who are investing in uranium, what's the biggest mistake that you see new investors making? Is it underestimating, you know, geopolitical risk, uh, permits, uh, not man not vetting management companies, is it chasing hype? What what do you see typically where we're making mistakes? Oh, man. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> I would say I would say the biggest mistake that I've seen is getting overly bullish on a single name or maybe two names and putting all of your money into one or two names because you believe that's going to outperform just a general basket. And maybe it will. And maybe you're Druckenmiller, but maybe you're not, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, you have to protect your capital in the sector. So um, diversify within the sector. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket and only the uranium basket. This shouldn't be your only your only holding in, in, in your portfolio should not be just uranium. It's not my own and my only uh, long. I'm obviously mostly long uranium because it's what I know best and I, I feel like I can trade it quite well. Mm -hmm. But um, allocate, allocate carefully. Don't buy just one or two names. Don't use margin. Don't use leverage. Don't buy short dated calls or puts for that matter. Mm -hmm. and, um, and definitely tranche into positions because it's very easy the sector for some reason has it, it evokes a lot of emotion in in investors for whatever reason mm -hmm. i don't know if it's the volatility it's the reaction <laughs> yeah it's the volatility it's it's what happened in the previous bull market when we had you know stocks return five ten thousand percent in three or four years and people have a memory of that so they're like i, I don't want to miss it i'm going all in right now Enter into tranches, despite how excited you are right now, most of the time this market will give you opportunity. Um, always keep a little bit of cash on hand. Don't go all in just because you believe some certain name or now is the time. Be patient with yourself, be patient with this market. This is going to be, despite the fact that I've been following this for as many years as I have, I still think we have a long runway here. I really do. Um, I don't see where this ends. I don't know where the supply will come from eventually to breach mm. demand and actually yeah. trigger a, a move down in the price. So I think we have many years ahead of us. Be patient, don't get too excited about, about one name, no margin, no leverage, tranche into positions. Justin, you mentioned demand. Uh, I'm guessing that AI and the growth of AI plays a factor in that. Do you see those things being related and in increasing the demand for it that actually necessitates uh, an overall upward trajectory? Definitely. Yeah. We wrote a lot about that in the, in this month's newsletter with actually just came out this morning, which is, it's kind of the golden age of power right now. It's what everybody's talking about. It's the limiting factor for the growth of AI is power availability.